Okay, East is the dealer. Let's have a look what they've got. Mm, that's interesting. Um, so we've got a very distributional hand here. We've got seven spades. Unfortunately for us, we uh, we only have three points, two of which are in our suit. Um, so we're the first person to bid. So we could open a preemptive bid here. I mean, strictly speaking, we would like another spade on it. Let's say the king of spades or the ace of spades to go in there. That would be well, that would be nice. Um, strictly speaking, a, a preemptive bid, you need five to nine, ten ish points, something in that region. So three is obviously a very weak preemptive bid. Um, our suit is also a bit dodgy, um, so the textbook here would say to pass as the as the dealer simply because our suit quality and our hand quality overall isn't sufficient to open a preemptive bid. If you were to open a preemptive bid, you would open three spades. Um, would I open three spades? Depends how I feel. Pro I mean, I'd probably be tempted, but probably would resist in in actuality. Um, I don't think three spades is a bad bid. I just think it's hyper aggressive. Um, I tend to be aggressive, so if I think it's wrong, it's probably super, super aggressive. Um, so I would pass, albeit I'm tempted to open three spades. So, let's have a look what Sal's got. Right, uh, 14 points. Um, East has passed, which means we get the chance to open the bidding if we want to. Obviously with 14 points we want to open the bidding at the one level. Uh, unbalanced hand with longer clubs. So we would like to open one club um, with, a, with the hope of rebidding spades to show our 5-4 shape. Um, there is a common misconception where you never deny a 4 card major, so some might mistakenly open this hand one spade. The problem with that is, when your partner responds, let's say, two diamonds, you have no bid that makes any sense then, because if you bid no trumps that shows a balanced hand, if you bid clubs that shows five spades, four clubs. So whenever you're opening an unbalanced hand, you should always open your longest suit. So in this instance, we have to open one club. Okay, West now. So West has 8, 10, 11 points. Um, it's close to an opening bid, but not quite. Um, with the fact that South has opened the bidding, that obviously takes away our, our possibility of opening the bidding. Um, we're not strong enough to make a takeout double. Takeout double, you want an opening hand, albeit this is close. And also, we would like shortage in clubs, which we don't have to make a takeout double. Um, if they don't want spade, you might make a takeout double on this hand, although I think opposite a past partner is probably not the correct thing to do. Uh, the other options are to bid a suit, but we don't have a five card suit to bid, so unfortunately for us, we have to pass. So, North, responding to South's one club. Okay, that's an interesting hand. Um, we have got six, twelve points in total. Um, we have a lot of diamonds, so it looks like we're going to be bidding diamonds, given that that's our only biddable suit, really. Um, we shouldn't be jumping around as the responder. Yes, we've got 12 points, our partner's open the bidding, so we're suspecting we're going to end up playing in-game. Um, but we shouldn't, we shouldn't start jumping around, because if we jump to, let's say, two diamonds or three diamonds, it actually consumes our room, and one diamond is a completely forcing bid. So we would quite like, really, to, uh, to just bid one diamond, see what our partner's hand is about, and then reassess on the next round of bidding. Often it's responders' duty to make a decision on the second round of bidding and not jump about on the first round of bidding. So here I would bid one diamond and see what our partner's hand is. Okay, so, as East, uh, I'm tempted again to bid. I was tempted in the first instance, I'm tempted now. Um, if you are to make a preemptive bid, the best kind of premise to follow is to be in and out quickly. So if you are going to make a preemptive bid, you make it straight away, you go to the absolute limit, and then you don't bid any more. Obviously your partner might bid more, but you shouldn't bid any more. Um, with that in mind, given that we haven't opened this hand, I think we should respect the fact that we've treated it as too weak to make a preemptive bid, and therefore we should continue in that vein, and therefore pass. However, I understand that the opponents have now opened the bidding, so it's a more attractive prospect to make a preemptive bid, especially given that they're vulnerable, if they do have a vulnerable game on. Um, but I just think this is too weak. I mean, you could make a weak jump over call and pretend you've got six, or you could jump to three spades. Um, I think if you are going to do that, you sort of wish you did it on the first round of bidding. So I think pass is the correct bid simply because we're so weak. But of course you could jump to two or three spades to, to kind of get in their way. What you mustn't do is bid one spade because one spade shows a better hand but fewer spades. So one spade would show five spades, but a decent overcalling hand. We don't have a decent hand, we have a weak hand with a long suit, so you have to jump in that instance. So if you are to bid, it is two spades or three spades. Um, but I think pass is the right bid, so I would pass.
Okay. Uh, partners respond to one diamond, that's a forcing bid, we have to bid again. We're quite happy to bid again. Um, we are unbalanced, so therefore we want, to, we want to follow up with our two bid plan. Our two bid plan was to bid our longest suit first, then our second suit next. Um, so we should bid our spades. We can bid the spades at the one level, and we should do so. We are a minimum-ish opener, we're in the bottom half of our opening range. Um, so we should rebid one spade, that would show five clubs, four spades, unbalanced hand, and kind of a minimum 12 to 15-ish. Um, opening hand, so I would bid one spade. Okay, so back to north now. Um, east West are, are passing through now. They've they're not getting involved in the bidding, so it's just North South auction. Um, north has got a um, not a problem necessarily, but I suppose it is a kind of a problem. We've got kind of a too good a hand, which is a strange way to to frame it as a problem. Um, we don't just want to rebid our diamonds at the two level because if we rebid our diamonds at the two level, that would suggest that we have a weak hand with lots of diamonds, telling our partner to go away. We could, of course, choose to agree with our partner's clubs, um, but we don't typically want to play in a minor, especially given the level of points we have. We would have to jump to game, which would be five clubs, which seems rather rather hasty. Um, we've got stoppers ourselves in hearts. Queen Jack X of hearts is a bit a bit, a bit ropey. Um, but I think these diamonds are too good to just mention once. So I think we need to rebid the diamonds, but I don't want to rebid them at the two level because I think this hand is, is too good for that. So I would jump rebid the diamonds. Whenever you rebid a suit as a responder, it promises six cards, and jumping shows a, a, an invitational ish hand, so sort of 11, 12 ish points, which is what we have. We do have a void, but it's a void in our partner's suit, so they tend not to be as good as voids inside suits. So I would, I would jump to three diamonds. It's a non-forcing bid, which is on the edge of uncomfortable, but I think if we just bid three no trumps, that would be somewhat hasty, um, given that we might only have 23, 24 points between the two hands. You could bid three no trumps, that's not unreasonable. But I would jump rebid the diamonds to, to, describe, to our hand, describe to our partner rather our hand with more, with more accuracy. Again, two diamonds is too weak, hence why we're jumping to three diamonds. All right, uh, partners responded, sorry, jump responded, three diamonds. Um, so that shows six or more diamonds and a invitational hand, 11, 12-ish. We've got 14 points, so we'd like to be in game. Now, we could agree they're diamonds. Coincidentally, we, North has seven diamonds, but we don't know that. So we wouldn't really be agreeing the diamonds with the South cards. Um, we'd look primarily to a no trump contract, given that our partner has minors and they have denied four cards in spades. Um, so, have we got a stopper in the unbid suit is the question, and the suit that has not yet been bid is hearts, and we do indeed have a stopper, King 10X is definitely a stopper in hearts, might manifest itself as two stoppers, um, but it's certainly one stopper, so I would now opt for three no trumps, mainly because we've got enough points for game, but we've got a minor, well, both of us have minor orientated hands, so no trumps tends to play better. Uh, I'm not envisaging anything more than game, because our partner has limited their hand to about 12 points, so we haven't got enough to go for a slam. But we do have enough to go for game, and we have got a stopper in the unbid suit. So I would bid three no trumps, which should end the bidding. When South bids three no trumps, they're promising a stopper in the unbid suit, which is the heart suit. Um, so we could just trust them and play in three no trumps, or we could think, actually, our hand is rather unbalanced for no trumps, which it is. A void is a very unbalanced hand. Um, so actually we would prefer to play in a suit. The only problem with that is the suits we are choosing to play in are clubs or diamonds. Diamonds being the suit that we have lots of, clubs being the suit that we have a fit for our partner in. Um, so I actually think it's better to just trust our partner and let them have a go at three no trumps. No, I don't think this is a no trump hand, but our partner has bid the suit we're avoiding and has shown a stopper in the unbid suit. So hearts look pretty well stopped. Uh, given that we've got Queen Jack X, that means that our hearts should be at least double stopped. And... Um, they've bid the suit that, uh, that we are void in, so the spade shouldn't be that much of a concern. Not only that, the opponents are quite unlikely to lead spades. I mean, they might do, but they're unlikely to do so, given that they can see South has bid the spade. So the spade worry is not that much of a worry, if you see what I mean. Um, not only that, our diamond suit will probably present a big threat to the opponents in no trumps. This might be six or seven tricks, this suit right here. So um, I would trust them in playing three no trumps, albeit this doesn't look a very no trumpy hand. So I would pass and let them have a go. Leading against three no trumps is often a tricky spot. Um, from the bidding, you should always use the bidding to, to help you help guide what you think you should lead. That doesn't mean you're always going to lead the right thing, but it gives you a clue. 
Um, so what, from, from the bidding, we know that North has six or more diamonds and uh, an invitational hand, sort of 12-ish. We know that South has limited to about 14, 15 points, uh, and they have five clubs, four spades. And their three-no Trump has promised a heart stopper. So, looking at our hand, none of those suits actually look particularly attractive. Spades and clubs were bid on our right, diamonds were bid on our left, and they have a stopper in hearts on our right. So if you, if you actually analyse that and break that all down, none of them look particularly attractive. However, they don't necessarily have more than one stopper in hearts. So it's probably right to lead the unbid suit. Whenever you're unsure, it's almost always right to lead the unbid suit. Um, our partner might have, let's say, queen to four hearts, or queen, you know, king jack to four hearts with the queen hearts on our right, or something like that. So we should, we should lead a heart, simply because it's the unbid suit. Um, although we know South has a stopper, or rather they've shown a stopper. They, they might not have one, I suppose. Um, you could alternatively try to lead a, a suit that has been bid on a guess on what your partner's suit length might be. But of course your partner's long suit may also be hearts. So normally you lead fourth card down if you're longest and strongest. The bidding doesn't really deter us from doing that given that our longest suit has not been bid by the opponents. So therefore I would lead fourth down of, from our heart suit here, not the diamond suit. It's okay to lead away from an ace against no trumps. It's not okay to lead away from an ace against trumps. So given that we're in three no trumps, a small heart lead is fine. So, good to think at trick one. Um, we're in three no trumps, so no trumps tends to be a contract where you count your top tricks and then you look to try and establish your extra tricks. Now establishing extra tricks is almost always through length. Normally you try to run the opponents out of a suit and then have winners by small cards simply because the opponents can't follow suit anymore. So looking at this hand, our top tricks, we have um, two in spades, none in hearts, although we will make some tricks in hearts, and two in clubs, and we've got none in diamonds either, because we're missing the ace of both diamonds and hearts. So we've got one, two, three, four top tricks. Four top tricks is not very good, given that we need at least nine to make our contract. Um, extra tricks we will make through length, so we might make extra tricks in diamonds, depending on how they break once we get rid of the ace, of course. We might make extra tricks in clubs, depending on how they break. So we could go to chase the club suit, or we could chase the diamond suit. And we will also make extra tricks in the heart suit, simply because we have big cards there. We've got queen, jack, and the king. So once the ace of hearts is gone, we will make two extra tricks there. So it looks to me like we've got two tricks in hearts, two tricks in spades, two tricks in clubs, and then we need to make three more from either setting the club suit up or setting the diamond suit up. Typically, you choose the longest suit because that, ha that yields the most tricks when it has, has been established. The longest suit here is by far those diamonds on the dummy. So what it looks like we want to do is try to get rid of their ace of diamonds and then play the diamonds from the top, hoping that the diamonds break so that we can play all of that diamond suit as winners. We might make six tricks from those diamonds if the diamonds break nicely. Get rid of their ace and have six diamond winners there. That would be very, very handy because that would go with our other six tricks in theory for us to make 12 tricks. The problem with the 12 trick theory is that we're going to lose two aces. So the opponents are going to make two tricks before we get to our 12. So it's looking like we might make 11 tricks here as long as the diamonds behave. If the diamonds misbehave we might end up losing two diamond tricks. Um, fortunately for us, the opponents have led hearts where we've got two stoppers in. Spades would have been a bit more of a scary lead because they would have got rid of our ace or king of spades and then they might have had a lot of spade tricks. But fortunately for us, they've led hearts, which we have six cards in. So I'm not feeling particularly threatened by the heart lead, albeit they will make the ace. So for now, I would play a small card from the dummy, mainly because that preserves the good cards in dummy because we might need to use them as entries later on, given that we've only got one diamond. Uh, and also, we get to see what uh, East has to play. They might play the Ace of Hearts, or maybe they'll play a small heart and let us win something cheap here. But Diamonds is, is the plan. We're going to play on Diamonds as soon as we get the chance. But for now, I will play a small heart from the dummy. So, third hand plays high. Um, that's a little bit laughable, given that our hearts are so naff. But um, we should try and beat the seven. If we don't beat the seven, Declarer will let the seven win, which is bad, of course. So we should play the nine, forcing something from Declarer. Obviously our partner was hoping we had better hearts than we did, um, but unfortunately we don't. So we need to try to force something out from Declarer. It's possible our partner has heart on us, or rather it looks likely that our partner has heart on us. So we need to try to force Declarer's heart honour out from them. Let's say they've got the ace or the king. And then hopefully our, our partner's heart honour will kill something on the dummy. We definitely need to play the nine here, otherwise Declarer will not play their, their big, heart, big heart. We know Declarer has a big heart because they've bid three no trumps, so they should have a heart stopper. So playing the nine of hearts at least tries to force that out. So I would play the nine of hearts. Third hand plays high.
So the Nine of Hearts has appeared from East. That gives me the inkling that West has the Ace of Hearts. East would probably play the Ace of Hearts if they had it. So that gives me a clue that West has the Ace of Hearts. Doesn't really help us though. We've got two heart tricks only. Um, we're going to lose the Ace. We're going to make the King, Queen, Jack or Ten, depending in, in, in any kind of fashion. Um, we can play the Ten, we can play the King. It's all equivalent because we have the Queen, Jack on the dummy. Um, it's probably slightly better to play the Kings to leave the big hearts on the dummy, which is where we need the entries. And the reason we need the entries over there is because the diamonds are the suit we're going to chase. Um, also, it disguises where the ten of hearts is, but I don't think that's going to be particularly relevant. It's all about how the diamonds behave here. So I would play the king of hearts, um, win this trick, and then uh, look to play on the diamonds straight away. So, play on the diamonds. Uh, low diamond. We're going towards the king, queen, jack. Um, this has an outside chance that west has a singleton ace. That's, that's nice for us. Or they might play their ace, if, if indeed they have it. Um, but we basically we need a how many diamonds are on the dummy? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got eight diamonds in total. Um, so we need the diamonds to be three and two, or we need the ten to be singleton, or the ace to be singleton. Ace singleton only helps us with West though, because if the ten is singleton, that goes right in there, and that sets up all the diamonds. They're all high then, apart from the uh, the ace of course. Um, if the ten or ace is not singleton, then we need the diamonds to be three and two, so that after we play the king and then the queen and the jack, all of the diamonds have gone. So play a low diamond from our hand. Um, West should play low. West should not play the ace of diamonds. When you're in second seat, you should always play low if you can. Um, that gives the declarer no information, and also if you had played the ace, they would play small, and that sets the diamonds up for them. So don't help them. You will always mate your ace, especially in no trumps. Um, so when they play low, um, declarer should play the king, queen or jack. I personally prefer going top down, but some players prefer the other way, I don't mind. Um, so I would play the king. And East has to follow with a ten of diamonds. Now that is a very, very nice card that declarer can see there. And the reason that's so good is because the queen, jack, nine and eight are all equivalent now. They're all as good as one another because the ten of diamonds has gone. So when we get rid of that ace of diamonds, these will all be winners. Obviously, except for the one that falls to the ace. Um, so the diamonds are now going to come in once we've got rid of that ace of diamonds, which appears to be with West. So we would win that king of diamonds because no one played their ace of diamonds on it. And then we would now be in a position where we would continue those diamonds. Just because no one's played the ace of diamonds doesn't mean we should just turn away and start playing clubs, for example. We should continue playing the diamonds. We want to get rid of that ace. We want to set the diamonds up. You could play the queen, jack, nine or eight. Again, they're all equivalent now that the ten of diamonds is gone, but I would play the queen because that gets rid of the eight. Again, I prefer top down is, is my personal preference. Um, East hand is pretty much dead now. They're not going to do anything, I don't think. Uh, they would probably discard a spade, although it doesn't actually matter what they discard at all, I don't think, unless uh, I suppose they need to keep hold of the jacket clubs, but that's about it. Um, what we discard here, we need to discard a suit we're not interested in. We're not interested in spades. We're never going to set the nine or the three of spades up unless something very strange happens. So we can also discard a spade. Um, and now West is in a bit of a catch-22. Do they take their Ace of Diamonds, making all your Diamonds winners? Or do they not take their Ace of Diamonds, in which case you're going to play more Diamonds? They can't win, they're going to win their Ace of Diamonds once and once only, so they probably will take it. Like so. So that trick is done. Now, on the, uh, on the Diamond winner from West, they now have the lead. They again shouldn't turn their attention to clubs because South the declarer bid the clubs, nor should they really lead a diamond given that all those diamonds are now winners. So their alternative is play a low heart getting rid of the queen or the jack with the hope of their ace of hearts gets rid of the other one later or play the ace and another heart. Now the problem we've got here is declarer's hand is looking, sorry, dummy's hand is looking rather threatening. The, the, Five diamond winners here are looking very threatening. Declarer may well be throwing away losers left, right and centre in a short moment. So I think what I would do as a defender now as West is I would take the ace of hearts. I'm scared that I'm not going to get my ace of hearts. Especially if we play a low heart, letting them win the queen or the jack. Uh, bear in mind we've seen the king already. We might not make our ace of hearts. It's unusual to grab tricks as a defender, but the reason we're doing so is this threatening suit here is looking like a lot of discards are on the way. So I would, I would grab the ace of hearts whilst I can. Um, play a low heart, they play a low heart, and we play a low heart. Nothing particularly exciting about that trick. Uh, oh, that we lost, the, we lost the other two. So they're the two aces that we knew we were going to lose. We were going to lose those two aces, and we have done. They were both with West, as we thought they were. But now it's looking like, from Declarer's position, we're looking in a pretty strong position. We've got five diamond tricks, which we can get rid of. One, 
two, three, four. We've actually got too many discards. It looks like we're going to make, again, because we thought we could make 12 tricks, but we had to lose the two aces, that's why we've got that overhanging one. The defenders now can't do anything. Whatever they do now, you get the lead on the dummy by either playing a heart or a club to the dummy, and you rattle off all those five diamonds, throwing away all your losers over here. It's most likely the defense will switch to a spade in the hope that the ace of spades is here to grab another trick. However, whatever they do, we can win the lead and get to the dummy. So if they did play a spade, hypothetically speaking, you would throw away something that is not a winner. So not the queen of hearts, not the king of clubs, and not any of those diamonds. Those diamonds are all going to be winners, don't forget. So you throw away a club, probably. Uh, they play the queen, playing third hand high, which is sad for the defense, because now when you play the ace of spades, all the tricks should now be declarers. Simply, we go over to the dummy to all those winning diamonds. So we, we get over to the dummy with either the king of clubs or the queen of hearts. Um, either is fine. And now we've got the king of clubs, the ace of clubs, the queen of hearts, which is a winner, and those five diamonds. As long as you play them all the way from the top, jack, nine, eight, that will get rid of all those diamonds. They're all winners. They're winners. And that's a winner too. So you should make 11 tricks in total.